Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and we are talking about organic nomenclature today. And we're just going to do some practice. Yes, love practice. Okay, so in terms of actually doing practice, we have four problems here, four things that we should be naming, right? In intro chem and in gen chem 2, often we will give you a structure and you need to name it. Okay, sometimes we'll give you a name and you need to draw out the structure, but usually that's of the simplest variety. So, for instance, we would give you something like one hexanal, and then we would, it would, it's usually some kind of multiple choice problem. You say, which of the following is one hexanal, and you would pick the one that is one hexanal. We'll just deconstruct why it would be one hexanal. Okay, but Usually you're given a structure and you're asked to name it. So what do we want to do here? In each of these, what we would like to do is we would like to figure out what the longest continuous carbon chain is. Seems like a good thing to do. The longest continuous carbon chain is basically what that means is it's the longest set of lines that you can go through, starting at one end, drawing through as many lines as you can before you have to stop and pick up your pencil and you're at an end, okay? All right, so that's what a longest continuous carbon chain is. That's what the parent chain is. And you should pick the one that is true for each of these, okay? We would, you can do lots of different numbering. Sometimes it takes a lot of practice to get down which one is the longest, right? So here, if I started here, I would have, um, we know that in these structures, these are skeletal, formulas or line drawings at the end of every line and every juncture between two lines or three lines there is or for even four lines there is a carbon there okay and then I would fill in the number of H's around that carbon based off of the number of bonds that are shown because I'm only showing carbon to carbon bonds or I'm showing carbon to functional group bonds which is really cool all right so in this case let's do this I could start here at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one version of this. I could start over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven there. How about we start up here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is bigger than seven. So then my question is, I have two ways to number this, right? I could number it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or I could number it the exact opposite direction, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My question for you is which of these is the better numbering? Well, the better, better numbering has to be based off of priority, right? We know that priority in organic chemistry means that there are groups, there are things that we see, especially in skeletal formulas, that are important. And when they're important, that's what priority means, they're important, they get the lowest number possible, and they have priority in the name, okay? So, in terms of what we're going to see, what's the highest priority? We've already talked about it, but it's multiple bonds, right? The next highest priority is functional groups. And we know that indeed functional groups with multiple bonds would be important than more important than both of these. And then the l next priority is alkyl groups. And so let's see if I have any of these in this structure that I have to worry about, right? Are there any multiple bonds? No, I don't see any multiple bonds. There's no time when I have two lines drawn right by one another, okay? Like I have here. Functional groups. Functional groups are designated in line drawings. So that's where these O's, O's and H2, all of those are functional groups. No functional groups here that I have to worry about. Do I have any alkyl groups? Well, yes, I do, because I have C's and H's that are not numbered as part of the chain, no matter which numbering I'm talking about. Okay, if that's true then, the alkyl groups need to have the lowest set of numbers possible. And when I look at this, I have four, five, and six on the pink numbering, or three, four, and five on the uh, yellow numbering. 
And which one is the lower set? The yellow numbering, which means that these pink ones need to go away, right? The better numbering gives the lowest set of numbers to something that has priority. All right, so now I have this setup, right? I have eight carbons. They have all single bonds between them. I need a, a parent chain name that's indicative of the fact that there's eight carbons. That's where I get the stem. The stem here is oct. And, oh, let's write that down, oct. And the fact that they have all single bonds between those carbons means that it falls into the sub uh, the subclass in hydrocarbons of alkanes, right? So alkanes, it means it has to have an ane ending to say that there are all single bonds between those carbons. So the parent chain here, the part that's numbered, is called octane. Oct meaning eight carbons, ane meaning all single bonds between them. Now I need to do something with these alkyl groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name these alkyl groups and I'm going to name them just as I have been dealing with everything else. I'm going to figure out how many carbons are in that group hanging off. And then I'm going to add an ending that is indicative of the fact that they're an alkyl group, which is the ill. Right? So here I have one carbon. One carbon stem is meth. And then add the ill to say that it's an alkyl group, which gives me methyls. Here I have one carbon. That's meth. Ill, again, tells me it's an alkyl group with one carbon in it. Here I have one, two carbons. The stem for two carbons is F. And then I add an ill saying it's an alkyl group. So that's an ethyl. Awesome. Last piece that you get to do, you get to put these in alphabetical order in front of the parent chain name while also designating what position that's numbered on the chain that they're hung that they're hanging off of, right? So how are they hung on this chain? Okay. So in this case, I have I have to figure out alphabetical order first, right? So uh, E comes before M. So ethyl's going to come first. Ethyl, and then methyl's going to come second. All right. I need to tell where on the chain the ethyl is hanging off of. It's hanging off of position number four, right? It's hanging off of this carbon right here, which we labeled four. The methyls are hanging off of three and five. And notice I'm using dashes to separate numbers. I'm using commas to separate, uh, well, sorry, dashes to separate numbers from words commas to separate multiple numbers. And if I don't have a number and a word that I need to separate between, then I can just run the words together. Okay. The last piece that we're missing here, it's not enough to call this 4-ethyl-3,5-methyl-octane. Because in organic chemistry, we try to be as redundant as we possibly can. <laughs> okay. So we want to be as redundant as we possibly can. We need to say not only is there a methyl at three and five, but there are actually two methyls, one at three and one at five. Okay, so the way we do that is we put a Greek prefix in front of the methyl to say how many of them there are, which is where di comes in. So if I were gonna draw this nicely, I would have four ethyl, so my name of my compound here, four ethyl, three, five dimethyl octane. Looks like fun, right? Yeah, let's do it again. That's why it was so much fun. So much fun, let's do it again. Okay, in this case, on uh, number two, I need to figure out the longest continuous carbon chain first. How long is the longest continuous carbon chain? Well, it would help to know where we should begin numbering, right? So here, we cannot start at this end. We could start at this end. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then a lot of people want to label that seven. Let me just put out there that you're labeling carbons. You can only number the carbons. And that has an O right there. And if there's an O right there, there's not a carbon right there. So I could do one, two, three, four, five, six. I could do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like six is the longest, right? Okay, the question is, do I label it from left 
to right or right to left? Well, let's look if see if we have anything that has priority, right? Do I have any multiple bonds? Yes, I do. Do I have any functional groups? Yes, I do. This is super important then, so I should label that with one. Two, three, four, five, six. Remember that you don't label the O with one because it's already, uh, you're already showing what it is. Okay, so now I have my O's, my, I have my carbon chain labeled. And this carbon chain has six carbons. That's awesome. The stem for six carbons is hex. And all of the carbons, all of the carbons are singly bonded to one another. Yes, it has a double bond to an O, but all the carbons are singly bonded to one another. So this would be, this would end with ane again. So this would be hexane. OK, that's awesome. We need to figure out what else is going on here. All right, got some stuff. Got some stuff. And then we got this. That's funky right there. All right, so in terms of labeling these, we need to label with our, these are carbons and hydrogens that are not numbered as part of the longest continuous carbon chain. So that means they're alkyl groups. Here, this one looks a lot like that one. So we already know what that is. That's a methyl, right? Awesome. And then here we have one, two, three carbons. But this is a little bit weird because usually when we have three carbons, we wanted to just look up the stem for three carbons. Say this is some carbon chain, this is some parent chain, this squiggly line. When I have three carbons all in a row, we can call that a propyl. Prop meaning three, il meaning alkyl group. Okay? This is not the same. This is like this, right? And so, it, yes, it has three carbons in it, but it doesn't look the same as all in a straight line, which means it's an isomer of the propyl group. So we call it isopropyl. Okay, so that's what this one is, isopropyl. And then we got this functional group here. You gotta look up what the functional groups are. The functional group in this case has a double bond to an O, right? So it has some carbon chain. Let's put this, where am I gonna put this? I'll put this here. We're gonna get back to hexanal in a minute here. It has an R and then a C double bonded to an O and an OH. This is what we call a carboxylic acid group, right? So I'm gonna label it over here. Carboxylic acid group. Okay, so what in the world am I gonna do with this? What I'm gonna do with this is I am going to label the uh, alkyl groups in front of the parent chain name, just as I've been taught. Right, so I'm gonna still do that. But in the case of this particular, particular functional group, this changes the parent chain name. That's how much priority it has. It actually changes the parent chain name in that it changes the ending. So if we did not have the carboxylic acid group there, right, we would have just had hexane. But because we have the carboxylic acid group, Usually when it changes the parent chain name, it changes it in such a way that's reflective or indicative of the group that changed it, okay? And when we change a parent chain name for a carboxylic acid, what we do is we take off the last E and we add an oic acid, okay? So what is the parent chain name here? The parent chain name here was hexane, but because of the carboxylic acid, it is hexanoic acid, okay? We're gonna put a one in front of that because we wanna tell where the oic acid is, okay? And then I just put, arrange the two alkyl groups here in alphabetical order in front of the parent chain name. So when I do this, I'm gonna put three isopropyl, four methyl, 
one hexanoic acid. Okay, and that should actually be all one line. So if I were going to write it in the correct way, all in one line here, you could see that the reason it, it looks like it's all kind of jumbled, but it should be all in one big huge thing, right? So let's get rid of this methyl too while we're at it. And I'll redo that line a little bit so that we can really see the glory of the name of this thing. All right, what's the name of that compound? That compound is 3 isopropyl 4 methyl. Realize that I designated what number on the chain those two alkyl groups were hanging off of. 1 hexanoic acid. All carbonyls, all carbonyls, carbonyls are a major class of organic compounds that have C double bonds to O's, okay? They're actually really super important, especially in biological chemistry. And they are so important that they kind of get their own major class. They're kind of on the same level as the hydrocarbons, okay? We're acting as if uh, these are part of hydrocarbons, but they're actually not. They're so important that they get their own thing, okay? But having said all of that, every time you see a carbonyl, a C double bonded to an O, realize that you will be changing the parent chain name, okay? With some ending that's indicative of the carbonyl. So let's go back to one hexadal for a moment here. Oh, you guys can't see that. All right, sorry. Get a little crazy with the. I'm sorry, you couldn't see the three either. I'm so sorry. Getting a little wild and crazy with my edges here. And you can't see the four either. Ooh. Lots of things you can't see here. Let's put this four ethyl right there. Woo, four ethyl. Now you can see it. <laughs> and this is the name for number one. Woo, this is the name for number two. We can get rid of this name for number two because. We don't have to worry about it. Let's do one hexanal over here for a minute. One hexanal, if I wanted to think about that, right? We know that hex means six carbons, right? So one hexanal. One hexanal should mean, if I were gonna deconstruct this, then I would start with the stem, right? So hex means six carbons. How are they bonded? The AN tells me that. That tells me that there are single bonds between them. So I would start off with a chain that has six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And have single bonds between the carbons. And then the AL is when I've changed the parent chain name to reflect a functional group. So I just have to figure out what functional group gives me AL. And indeed, the functional group that gives me al is called an aldehyde, right? It's reflective of the name of the functional group. What is an aldehyde? An aldehyde is what we call a terminal carbonyl. It means it has to be at the end, right? So in terms of the terminal carbonyl, you would just put a C double bonded to an O at the end. Aldehydes and ketones are different from one another only in that idea. Aldehydes are at the end, have a carbonyl at the end. Ketones have a carbonyl somewhere in the middle. Okay, Carboxylic acids are actually derivatives of aldehydes because what we did is instead of having, if this carbon has one, two, three bonds shown, that means it has an H. That H, so we would show it like this if we were going to draw it as a functional group that you should be able to see, that H would be able to be replaced by other things. And in a carboxylic acid, it's replaced with an OH. In an amide, it's replaced with an NH2 or some derivative of an amine, okay? So all kinds of possibilities here. But yeah, it's kind of the general idea. If we give you something like one hexanal, it's gonna be relatively simple to draw it out. Okay. Number two took up a lot of space. Okay, let's do this one. Number three, 
We're looking to see if we have, let's figure out what the longest continuous carbon chain is first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'd look, at, look, there's something longer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight again. The question is, how are we gonna number this sucker? So let's just number it from the bottom up. First and see if that works, okay? All right, what we have is we have, let's do another numbering, let's go the other numbering too, just so that you have a sense of one versus the other. Okay, so I have orange numbering versus green numbering. Let's see which one is better, okay. From what I have here, I have an I and an NH2, and in terms of our reasoning, at this point in time, we don't have a really good sense of whether NH2 or I is more important. Okay, they both kind of do the same thing in that they are both labeled as functional groups that are labeled just like alkyl groups. So we don't have a good sense of one versus the other. So the fact that I have an I at two and an NH2 at seven or an I at seven and an NH2 at two those are the exact same numbers, except in reverse. So that's not going to make a difference as to my numbering. What will make a difference, however, are these two. So here I have, I have an uh, alkyl group and an alkyl group, right? This one is a methyl because it has one carbon hanging off of it, and this is an ethyl because it has two carbons. So the question is, are these equivalent to one another? Do these two act as if they're the same thing? And no, they do not. The longer the alkyl group, the more important it is. So in fact, the better numbering here is the green numbering. The fact that the ethyl is there and it is longer than the methyl means that the green numbering is actually the better of these two numberings. And I'm not erasing this perfect, but you guys get the idea. Okay, all right. So, having said that, I have eight carbons. They are all singly bonded to one another. This is an octane. All right, now I have all of these groups. I just told you that those two functional groups are labeled like alkyl groups. This is called an amino. This one is called an iodo. And I'm gonna put these all in alphabetical order in front of the parent chain name. You ready? It's gonna be great. Great fun right here. Let's erase this. Priority moment, we know that this is priority. I'll keep the priority up there, but you can just tell that that's priority. All right, so in octane, we have amino, so A, E, I, M. I think that's alphabetical order. Amino, I, O, O, E comes next. <laughs> All skipping. Oi. A, E, I, and I'm not going to have room for my methyl. Yeah, sometimes you have to erase. And then the methyl. and then the octane, right? All right, so all that I need now are numbers in front of each of these where they are on the chain. The amino hangs off of seven. The ethyl hangs off of four. Iodo hangs off of two. And the methyl hangs off of five. The name of this compound is seven amino 4-ethyl, 2-iodo, 5-methyloctane. Now, there are different conventions. Just to, as a side note, this is the convention we're using. Just put it in alphabetical order in front of the parent chain name. There are different conventions. Some conventions say, actually, you should consider um, functional groups as more important and therefore closer to the parent chain name than alkyl groups. There are all kinds of equivalent conventions. Make sure that you're recognizing what your instructor wants and what your instructor is using and use that convention. My convention 
is let's just take the easiest of the conventions that are out there and let's do a little bit of alphabetical order if they're basically equivalent species. Okay, and I consider functional groups that are named just like alkyl groups as equivalent species, although they really aren't. Functional groups add functionality to the chain, but that's how we're going to think about it to make it easy on everyone involved. Okay, it also makes sense then that functional groups that change the parent chain name would have higher priority than functional groups that do not change the parent chain name, right? So recognizing some of these intricacies, intri intri I can't say that word, intricacies, there you go, would actually be helpful, especially as you go on in organic naming. All right, last one, number four. That is a cyclic hydrocarbon. I'm going to number that from, I'm just going to number it clockwise. In this case, it actually doesn't matter as long as you recognize that one should begin with the double bond to the O. Because that's a cyclic hydrocarbon, it gets a little bit of extra. So that has six carbons, and those six carbons are all singly bonded to one another. Notice that the, that the double bond is to an O, so that makes it a functional group. All right, so six carbons singly bonded to one another, that would be hexane. Because they are arranged as a geometric figure with the same number of sides as there are carbons, we put a cyclo in front of that, so that's cyclohexane, okay, if it didn't have the double bond to the O. And here, we can recognize this double bond to an O as a carbonyl. What kind of carbonyl is it? Is it at the end? Or is it in the middle? In this case, there's actually no end to a cyclic hydrocarbon, so it has to be in the middle. So this would be what we call a ketone. If you were looking at this, this is kind of how it would look, right? So you have these R groups are just carbon chains of some length. You have a carbonyl in the middle. How am I going to change the parent chain name here? Well, the way I do this is always the same. I always take off the last E, and then I add something that's indicative of that particular functional group. So in this case, I'm going to add an O-N-E, which makes this cyclohexanone. Usually, you'll just see cyclohexanone, but if we were being super anal retentive, we would add that one just for clarity's sake. Okay, That was pretty long for four problems. So practice, practice, practice your organic naming and maybe we'll do some more on another video. Until I see you next time, adieu.